important instrument will be the heads-up display, or HUD. The HUD consists of two glass panels that are used to display projected information. The HUD is located between the top of the instrument panel and the canopy bow. Let's talk about its most important information. Horizontally along the top of the HUD is the heading tape with the heading marker in the center. The marker in relation to the tape indicates your current heading. The boxed number on the left side of the HUD is your calibrated airspeed, and the box on the right side is your barometric or radar altitude. Above the altitude box is your vertical velocity. In the center of the HUD is the pitch ladder that indicates your positive or negative pitch angle to the horizon line. In the center of the pitch ladder is the velocity vector that when uncaged shows the flight vector of your aircraft when it's not flashing. In other words, you will fly to the point your velocity vector is on unless it is flashing. Along the left side of the HUD is a data block of four values. The top is your angle of attack. Below that is your airspeed as Mach. Next is current G. And at the bottom is the peak G. Along the bottom of the HUD is a bank angle indicator. Press spacebar to continue. There are three primary controls that you will use to fly the Hornet. These are the control stick, throttles, and rudder pedals. The control stick controls pitch and roll. Push and pull back on the stick to lower and raise the nose of the aircraft. If thrust is constant though, you lose speed as you climb and gain speed as you dive. To roll the aircraft, push the stick to the left or right. By rolling the aircraft and then pulling back on the stick, you turn the aircraft. To control thrust, you use the left and right engine throttles. When you select the maximum throttle setting, the afterburners are selected. While these provide great thrust, they also consume fuel quickly. To move the nose of your aircraft laterally side to side, use left and right rudder pedals. You will also use the rudder pedals to steer the aircraft when you taxi using nose wheel steering. Press spacebar to continue. Ahead of you is a series of gates that you will fly through to practice flying the Hornet. A few things to keep in mind. First, Try to keep your airspeed between 250 and 400 knots. Second, be careful to not over control the aircraft with large, rapid control movements. Use smooth control inputs. Third, fly the aircraft to place the velocity vector on the HUD in the center of the next gate. Fourth, the faster you are, the wider your turns will be. Avoid getting too fast so you can make the turn to the next gate. Press spacebar when you are ready to start. While we strongly recommend a joystick, you can also fly the Hornet with a keyboard using pitch, up and down arrows, roll, left and right arrows, thrust, page up and page down, yaw, X and Y.
At any point of a lesson, you can press the pause key. This can be useful if you need more time to read the text or, or step away. To look around the cockpit, you can use the keyboard, view up, keypad 8, view down, keypad 2, view left, keypad 4, view right, keypad 6, zoom in, keypad asterisk, zoom out, keypad forward slash. There are several view options to view the world outside your cockpit. External of your aircraft and other aircraft, F2. Flyby of your aircraft, F3. Return to the cockpit, F1. You can also move your view to other entities in this lesson. Other aircraft, F-2. Ground units, F-7. Ships, F-9. Cycle through airfields, F-11. The map, F-10.
Altitude. Altitude. This concludes this lesson. You can keep flying or press escape to end this lesson.
Welcome to this training lesson on starting up the Hornet. In some missions, you will find yourself in a cold and dark Hornet that you will need to bring to life. While this can be a rather long process as described in the manual, you can also enable the auto start function. However, for this lesson, we'll review the full startup procedure. Press spacebar when you are ready to get started. The first thing we need to do is enable the two batteries. This will allow operation of the canopy and power the engine igniters. You'll also notice that the integrated fuel and engine indicator, or IFE, in the lower left portion of the instrument panel will have power. Move the battery switch to the up or on position with a right mouse button click. The Hornet has two fire detection circuits, A and B, that test for fire in the engines, auxiliary power unit, and bleed air system. Before we go into detail on that though, check that the hydraulic brake pressure gauge for the wheel brakes shows at least 3000 PSI. Confirm this by looking at the gauge, which is located to the left and up from the highlighted fire test switch. Okay, now put the spring-loaded fire test switch in the up test A position and keep holding Engine it up to left. test the A circuits. To do left. this, place the mouse over Engine the fire, fire test switch right. and hold down the Engine right mouse button. Right. Keep holding Engine the mouse button fire. down and do not release Engine it until it runs fire. through all the fire Engine test audio left. warnings. In addition to the audio warnings, also Engine note the fire right. test warning lights Engine on the upper right. left and right portions of the instrument panel. When it's done, press spacebar. We will now do the same thing for the B circuit. After waiting 10 seconds, place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the left mouse button to move the switch in the down test B position. Keep holding it down and then release it Engine once fire all left. the fire warning audio Engine messages have been left. played. Engine well fire done. Right. Press spacebar. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Good job. Note that in the top left portion of the IFE, you can see the RPM and temp of both the left and right engines. These will be important for when we start the engines. We will now turn on the auxiliary power unit, or APU. This is a small, self-contained engine that augments the bleed air system and will start turning the engines for engine starts. Place the APU control switch in the up or on position with a left mouse button click. Once the green light next to the APU switch comes on, move the engine crank switch to its right position, marked by the R with a right mouse button click. This will allow the APU to power the air turbine starter, or ATS, which in turn allows the aircraft mounted accessory drive, or AMAD, to start turning the fan blades within the right engine. Once the right engine RPM has reached 20%, as indicated on the IP, move the right throttle from off to idle by pressing right shift home. This in turn will introduce fuel into the engine combustion chamber and start the igniters. Once the right engine RPM has reached 60%, the right engine start cycle is complete and the right generator is automatically engaged. Once at 60%, press spacebar. Roll left, roll left. Flight controls, flight controls. When we conducted the tests of the A and B fire test circuits, we also closed the bleed air shutoff valves. We need to reopen these by rotating the bleed air knob clockwise 360 degrees from norm to norm. Do this by right mouse button clicking on the outer portion of the knob. When done, press spacebar. With the right engine running and generator power on, Place the left and right digital display indicators, or DDIs, to the day position using right mouse button clicks on both brightness selector knobs. Next, rotate the HUD Symbology brightness control knob clockwise by placing your mouse over it and rotating your mouse wheel forward. Once you see video displayed on the left and right DDIs and HUD, press spacebar. 
In the lower center of the instrument panel is the multi-purpose color display, or MPCD. Rotate the power and brightness control knob to the full bright setting by placing your mouse over the knob and rotating your mouse wheel forward. It will take a few moments to power on. Press spacebar once you see video displayed on the MPCD. On the left DDI, press the menu push button to bring up the support page. The support page has several sub-pages like the checklist, engine, fuel, ADI, and HSI. For now though, press the FCS push button to select the flight control system page. The FCS page shows the status of the control surfaces and any detected FCS errors. The X's indicate detected errors, but we will address those once the left engine is started. You should not see any two, R, or FADEC caution messages along the bottom of the left DDI. Note that by default, you will not have the built-in test or bit page on the right DDI. We'll come back to this. During this lesson and future lessons, you will often see and hear the master caution. This is the large yellow labeled button on the instrument panel that will light when any caution condition is triggered. There will also be an accompanying deedle deedle sound to draw your attention. Press this button or click on it to acknowledge the caution and extinguish the light. Press the master caution again to restack the caution and advisory notices along the bottom of the left DDI. Cautions will be along the top and advisories in smaller text along the bottom. If the left DDI is not on, then the caution and advisories will be displayed on another display. By default though, they will be on the left DDI. The Hornet comes equipped with an inertial navigation system, or INS. Use right mouse clicks to set the INS switch, located on the sensor panel to the ground position. This will start an INS ground alignment. Now it is time to crank the left engine. Go ahead and move the engine crank switch to its left position, labeled L. By left mouse click, once the left engine is at 20% RPM, as indicated on the IFE, move the left throttle from off to idle by pressing right alt home. This will add fuel to the engine and start the igniters. When the left engine is at 60% RPM, press spacebar to continue. On the FCS page, we have quite a few X's indicating abnormal FCS readings. To clear these, press and hold the FCS reset button. Located in the back of the left console is the panel for the onboard oxygen generation system, or OBOX. Go ahead and set the OBOG switch to its up, on position. To the left of the INS switch is the radar switch. Set this switch to the operate position using your right mouse button. Don't worry, the radar will be in silent mode. You won't microwave the ground crew. Our next step will be to run a bit on the flight control system, or FCS. Before doing so, set the flaps to the up, auto position with the F key or two right mouse button clicks on the flap switch. We'll now run a bit of the flight control system. This moves the control surfaces to their limits to test for any software or mechanical errors. First, select the FCS bit page from the bit page on the right DDI. To run the FCS bit, we'll need to activate two controls at the same time. While holding up on the FCS bit switch on the right wall, press the FCS push button on the right DDI. Upon doing so, you'll see the controls being cycled on both the FCS DDI page, and if you look outside the cockpit, you can watch the wing and tail control surfaces moving.
Once the FCS bit is complete, marked by the beep tone, place the flap switch in the center or half position with a left mouse button click on the switch. Takeoff is done with flaps set to half. Once we are airborne, we'll move them to auto. For takeoff, we will want our stabs trimmed for 12 degrees. To set this, press and hold down the takeoff trim button. Upon doing so, you will also notice that the stab values on the FCS page will change to 12. The leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps, and rudder should all have values of 30 degrees. You should also have no X's on the FCS page. Uncage the backup ADI by placing your mouse over the SAI cage knob and rotating the mouse wheel aft until the red flag is stowed. Close the canopy by holding the canopy control switch in the down, closed position until the canopy is closed. Do this by pressing the key combination or placing the mouse over the switch and holding down the left mouse button. Once the canopy is closed, press spacebar to continue. At this point, the INS has been aligned as indicated on the MPCD HSI page. Move the INS switch from ground to nav with one right mouse button click on the switch. Prior to taxi, press the menu push button on the left DDI to go to the TAC or tactical page. On the TAC page, you have access to sub pages like the stores management system, attack radar, HUD, and electronic warfare pages. On the left DDI TAC page, select the HUD push button to display a mirror of the HUD on the DDI. This can be useful when head down or in case of HUD failure. Let's now set up the right DDI. Press the menu push button on the right DDI to bring up the tactical page. Press the menu push button again to bring up the support page. Now on the support page, press the FCS push button. We will want the HUD on the left DDI and the FCS page on the right DDI when we taxi and take off. The parking brake system is operated with the yellow and black parking brake handle. The handle is currently in the park position, indicated by the fact that the park label is visible to the pilot. Release the parking brake now by rotating the handle 45 degrees counterclockwise from the extended position. This can be achieved by left mouse button clicking the handle or pressing the right alt P key. This will release the lock and allow the handle to return to the horizontal stow position, where the emerge label is visible to the pilot. This concludes the current lesson on starting up the Hornet. As mentioned earlier though, there is also an option for automatically starting up the Hornet by pressing the left window's home key. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key. In this lesson, we are starting in an up and running Hornet, and we will learn how to taxi to the runway and take off. Before we taxi though, let's set up a few more items that we did not cover in the cold start lesson. Press spacebar when ready. During low light operations like this evening, place the landing and taxi light switch in the up on position. Now, 
set up your position, formation, and strobe lights as you desire. The formation lights, or slime lights, are low intensity green lights that aid in close in formation flying. Position lights are red and green lights that mark the left and right sides of the aircraft, and the strobe are two flashing red lights on the tail. When done, press spacebar. Time to set up your internal lights. The instrument dial controls instrument panel lighting. The console dial controls the lighting on the left and right consoles. The flood dial illuminates the forward section of the cockpit. And the chart dial controls lighting of your lap area. The lights test switch will test all cockpit warning and caution lights. The worn caution dial allows you to adjust the illumination of those lights. The mode switch allows you to select default internal lighting for day, night, and night vision goggle use. Experiment with these and press spacebar when ready to move on. On the altimeter, rotate the pressure setting knob with the mouse wheel to set an airfield pressure elevation of 29.90 atmospheric pressure. Press spacebar when it's set. To steer the Hornet when taxiing, we will use the nose wheel steering, or NWS, by pressing the S key or the NWS button on the control stick. When engaged, as indicated by the NWS indication on the bottom right portion of the HUD, rudder inputs will steer the aircraft left and right. When the NWS button is held down, nozzle steering high or NWS high is enabled and allows a tighter turn radius. This is quite helpful on the crowded carrier jet. Press spacebar to continue. To get rolling, slowly increase the throttles until you have forward movement, but do not exceed 75% engine RPM. Press Z to steer left and X to steer right. Taxi forward to the runway directly ahead. Keep taxiing forward and practice both normal NWS and NWS high steering. Come to a halt just short of entering the runway by using the toe brakes at the top of the rudder pedals. Before entering the runway, arm the ejection seat by moving the ejection seat safe armed handle on your right in the down position so that the armed label becomes visible. Also, tighten your restraints. Check left and right for track. Increase engine RPM and enter the runway. Once on the runway, align the aircraft down the center line and come to a halt on the 25 runway heading marker. Press spacebar to continue.
On the right DDI, confirm that the stab position is set to 12 for both stabilators. While holding down the wheel brakes, increase engine RPM to 80% and check that the temps on the IFE do not exceed 800 degrees Celsius. In a Hornet, you always take off an afterburner. Release the brakes and push the throttles all the way forward to full afterburner. As you roll down the runway, keep aligned down the middle with very small rudder inputs. Keep a small amount of backstick and the Hornet will automatically rotate and fly off the runway. Raise the landing gear by moving the landing gear control handle in the up position. Then raise the flaps by setting the flap switch to the up auto position. in a hornet. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key.